Welcome, it's indisputable. Good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, none other than former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner, TYT contributor, will break down news with us. And in the bullpen, I got Kenny Shu coming back, author of An Inconvenient Minority and President of Color Us United. We will talk about critical race theory. He says it is a threat, ladies and gentlemen, to schools. Should be an interesting conversation. Top news story. Three cops tased a black man to death, killed him. After they killed the black man with a taser, a judge in their county said, "Oh, nothing to see here, they have immunity. The Supreme Court of the state of Georgia overturned that ruling and said no. The acts were egregious and not subject to immunity. These men must stand trial. Let me show you that mug shot from Washington County Sheriff's Office. Those are the three killers. They have now been set free because of a mistrial. Attorneys for the man tased and killed during an encounter with Washington County Sheriff's deputies in 2017 said a Supreme Court ruling sets a new precedent. Here's the screenshot of the three deputies killing a man. The man was simply walking, not bothering anyone. After a judge initially granted the deputies immunity. The state Supreme Court in Georgia ruled the deputies would have to stand trial in the death of Yuri Lee Martin. My brother, he was killed, he was murdered for nothing, said Martin's sister, Helen Gilbert. According to court documents, Martin, 58 years of age, was simply walking down the street in 2017 when he was stopped by three deputies. I see a man trying to walk home to his family. Then I see officers trying to impose their will on him and prevent his freedom of movement. They were unlawful in trying to stop him according to the attorney, Mawali Davis. Witnesses testified that the time of the encounter, during the time of the encounter, Martin never, not one time attacked the deputies and walked away several times. Defense attorneys argued that Martin fought with the deputies and the deputies tased them. Martin died at the scene. The Washington County Sheriff ultimately fired those three deputies for violation of department policies. Initially, a judge granted the deputies immunity. But on November 2nd, the state Supreme Court in Georgia ruled that the deputies would have to face charges in the case. You really cannot be targeted while walking black, Davis said. The deputies face a number of charges, including felony murder. And they have now been set free. Um, Here's the reality of the criminal justice system. And this is a real example of how the leadership of one person can be detrimental to the progress, to the flow of justice. One judge initially said nothing to see here. These individuals killed a man, yes, there's no debate about that. But they are immune from prosecution. The judge didn't even say that they were innocent of the crime. The judge just declared them to be immune from prosecution. That literally means a judge said that these cops are in fact above the law. That's what the judge said. And then a higher court, the Georgia Supreme Court, had to look at the case, it took years to get to the Georgia Supreme Court. They then looked at the case and said, nope, these men will have to stand trial. So they reversed the court's decision. But now you have local politics involved significantly. Because one judge is saying they should not be prosecuted. The same jury members that sit in Washington County for this trial are the same jury members who live in that community and they were told by a judge that they likely elected, hey, this is not a crime. You don't think that impacts justice in that local jurisdiction? So now there's a mistrial. Will the DA in Washington County 
refile these charges, don't hold your breath. Do not hold your breath, it's just a dead black man. Remember, initially the criminal justice system said no crime was committed. Senator Turner, there's a dead man, three white deputies killed him. A judge initially said they were immune to prosecution. Another court, the Supreme Court of Georgia said that court was in fact in error of the constitution. What are your thoughts? Glad to see that the higher court reversed the lower court's decision. It, thank God for that in, in the state of Georgia, no no doubt. Yeah. But we, we got a conundrum here, Doc, and this is what we talk about all the time. This is about a system that does not see black lives as equal, as, it, as important as other uh, lives. And then to deal with the fact of uh, immunity, just, just wholesale immunity to those law enforcement officers. Let the record reflect that he was just walking home or walking wherever he was going. But he was just walking, not bothering anybody. And they decided to do what they did to him, and then he ends up dead. We still have to have a reckoning in this. I mean, I'm trying to wonder is this 21st century or is it the mm. 19th century or the 18th yeah. century? Sometimes I question what century we are in based on what is happening in the injustice system. Yeah, and the thing is, Senator, these cops, because they have not been convicted of anything. Uh, they can literally go to another jurisdiction. Remember, the sheriff of that county determined based on his investigation that these men operated outside of protocol. Now, I don't give the sheriff of that county any uh, hero points because right. he could have arrested them himself. Yeah. And he decided to be a coward and simply fire them and allow another jurisdiction to deal with it. These are your guys, they are responsible to you and they should uphold the sentiment of the criminal justice system to a higher level than anyone else and they're not. They actually held to a lower level according to the judge that said they were immune. All right, it's cultural doc, and we yeah. know this too. It, it is definitely cultural transformation in the criminal justice system wholesale from local all the way up to the federal level must be had in the United States of America. We're gonna continue, I mean, unfortunately, Doctor, you do a very good job with these stories and exposing, but it saddens me. I mean, I want one day where you don't have many stories to choose from. That's right, yeah, put me out of a job. Yeah, That's what, that's what I, I dare you all, Come I'm talking on. about to the powers that be, put me out of a job, all right, do that. Uh, and you know, I get all of the inboxes and people tagging me on social media. Why does he talk about this? Why does he talk about that? Because it keeps happening, that's why. Amen. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump has endorsed uh, a leader who has been uh, charged with crimes against humanity. Okay, now. Normally this would be like a really, really big story, but it's kind of a story because it's Donald Trump. So let me take you to the background of this. Donald Trump has demonstrated just superb timing. He endorses a person and then basically right after the endorsement, they are charged with crimes against humanity, okay? Let's take you to the president of Brazil, Bolsonaro. Let's put up his picture, there he is, retired military officer turned politician. He's been Brazil's 38th president since 2019. The endorsement was made Tuesday ahead of Brazil's 2022 election. And the statement read, let's put up the statement, here it is, save America. Wait a minute, but he's the, he's the president of Brazil, Oh, anyway, okay, save America. President Donald J. Trump, but you're not president anymore anyway. That's another detail, okay. Save America, President Donald J. Trump, October 26, 2021. Endorsement of President Bolsonaro. President Bolsonaro and I have become great friends over the past few years. Really? He fights hard for and loves the people of Brazil, does he? Just like I do for the people of the United States. Damn it, Trump, you're not the president. <laughs> okay, anyway, Brazil is lucky to have a man such as Bolsonaro working for them. He is a great president and would never let the people of his great country down. Well, you know, that's interesting because according 
to his people, uh, he did let them down. So much so that he has now been charged with actual crimes against the citizens of his country. On the same day, the same day, seven senators of an 11 member Brazilian Senate Commission voted to recommend nine charges against the Brazilian president, including crimes against humanity and charlatanism. I didn't even know that was a thing, okay? So I'm looking at this, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, they have become great friends over the past few years. What in the world do they have in common? Well, there it is. They are both charlatans. And and I said, let me make sure I have the definition of charlatan correct. It is a person who makes elaborate, fraudulent, and often um, un, uh, untruthful claims about skill or knowledge, a quack or a fraud. There's the commonality, they're besties. They are literally the same person. Uh, this person has been charged with being a charlatan. Uh, th- that's something new, uh, but it's real. So let me give you the reason why they charged this cat. Why they recommended these charges for crimes against humanity and you tell me does it fit? Uh, Let's go to the COVID stats. Brazil is ranked third in the world with the number of cases and deaths related to COVID-19 after the US and India, according to John Hopkins University coronavirus tracker. Brazil has reported 21 million plus, almost 22 million COVID-19 cases, well over 600,000 deaths related to the virus. The charges recommended against Bolsonaro never, may never materialize. They may never come to fruition. The committee doesn't have the power to start a criminal or impeachment proceeding. That's in the hands of the Attorney General, who's an ally to the man who has been charged. You gotta love politics, right? But it's kind of similar here in America. This is really interesting. This individual has decided to ignore common sense protocols, common sense scientific remedy, intentionally wanted the population to be exposed to COVID-19 without the vaccination. This is the why for the charges, okay? All right, uh, Senator Turner, same same people. Yep, same people, different different country, that's all. Yeah. You know, it definitely takes one to know one, that's his soulmate. That's uh, the former <laughs> president so soulmate right there. I mean, you were pointing out the obvious. I mean, this dude is acting like he is still running things. You know, kudos to that Senate, uh, to that committee for really calling this president out, Bolsonaro out in the way that they did, even though they don't have the weight to see yeah. it all the way through. But they did not just sit back and, and let this man get away with this without exposing him and also calling him out. Who he is. I mean, I think he said something like, Doc, and I'm paraphrasing him, and this is President Bolsonaro, but he basically told his people, suck it up and drive on. You know, when it came to the COVID, everybody's gonna die. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, just, man, why do these kind of people even run for office when they just really don't give a damn about the people they serve? I just don't go into another profession. And why in the hell do we vote for them? I know, know? right? Hello, somebody. Uh, Let me give you an update to a story we covered. Uh, A cop killed an 11 year old girl. We covered this story initially, a state trooper has now been charged with murder. This state trooper flipped a family's car over killing an 11 year old child. We covered this initially, Monica Goods was in the car with her family. This cop decided to do a pit maneuver. Let's put up a picture of the New York state trooper. His name is Trooper Baldner. Okay, he's accused of ramming the car with the family of four inside, flipping the car and killing young Monica while on duty in December of 2020. He has now been charged with murder once again. Let's put up a picture of this dear, young, beautiful princess that he killed. Okay, her name is Monica. Monica is dead because of this guy. Let's put his picture up again. Violated all policies within his department, had a reckless disregard for life, and did not give a damn about the black bodies inside of that vehicle. Attorney General Letitia James charged Baldner with second degree murder 
which carries a maximum sentence of 25 years to life in prison. Second degree manslaughter and reckless endangerment, all of those charges fit statutorily. The Attorney General's office said Balner was in his police car when he stopped Tristan Goods for speeding in Ulster County just before midnight, December 22nd, right before Christmas. He was going to visit family for Christmas and had his wife and two daughters who are 11 and 12 years old in the car with him. During the stop, Balner administered pepper spray into the Goods car and Tristan Goods sped off. The indictment said the trooper followed the family's car ramming into the back of their car twice. Before Goods vehicle flipped multiple times, Monica Goods was ejected from the car and died according to the Attorney General. Now remember, he's well aware that children are inside of the vehicle. He knows this, he sprayed pepper spray on all of them and then hunted them down and killed an 11 year old child. Um, I'm glad to see the Attorney General move in the right direction on this. I've actually interviewed Attorney General James on my radio program before, very smart, very brilliant person. Uh, But once again, you can't keep reacting to things like this. Reform is about being proactive, right? And that's really what we need to see to remedy these issues moving forward. What are your thoughts, Senator? Amen, and may justice be served in this case. I mean, this, 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 this was a trooper gone wild. Yeah, There was no need to come at that family in that way. Yeah, the New York State Troopers Division, they've been in the news lately for a few things. Um, obviously, this is the most egregious of late. Um, we will continue to track the story all the way to trial and hopefully justice. We got more on the other side is indisputable stick and stay. Welcome back. All right, we got a lot of viewer comments. Before I go to those comments, let me remind everyone the power panel, all new Friday, the Young Turks, our sister Nina Turner will be on the show. Yes, uh, Jank, John, um, so that's hour one, stay tuned for hour two. Uh, we got JR. Uh, Rodriguez um, of the upcoming HBO Max comedy special Fighting Words streaming November 4th. That's gonna be hot. TYT.com forward slash live, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific time, real simple. Also reactions with Ray Vada, all right, don't forget that. Today after Indisputable, check check out an all new reactions. That's a Twitch exclusive, okay? 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific time, twitch.tv forward slash TYT again, and big announcement, TYT is looking for new video content creators. If that's you, we need you to apply. This is our Rebel HQ channel. Uh, We're looking for people to write, produce, host, edit short form editorial videos on breaking news and political stories with progressive, with a progressive point of view. If you're interested, real simple, tyt.com forward slash careers, tyt.com forward slash careers. Careers, let me read the comments. TYT member Chipper Nightshade says, what's up doc? Looney Tunes Bunny Rabbit, what's up? That's cute, thank you. (laughs) I like that. Nina Turner, Dr. Rashad Ritchie doubling down on making good trouble. Yes, and I like that picture. I was actually um, lecturing at West Georgia College, which is a predominantly white institution about race relations. It was a remarkable opportunity, a great, great, great institution. Cray Cray Souffle, that's Trump for you, always on the side of tyrants. Yeah, Uh, Laney says, uh, Laney is into it, says, Nina, my 11 year old watches every Thursday, you are my hero. Dr. R, we love you too, look at that love. Thank you for that, Laney. Raja Harris, hey Unc, hey Nubia, I mean Nina V. Turner. Thank you for that. Key to boot forever, I got my Karen shirt. <laughs> now you go out there and you find you some damn Karens, okay? All right, thank you for being supportive. Sandy L, our tasers kill more people than they discuss. Tasers are not non-lethal. Moon Dragon, pit maneuver should be outlawed. Yep, App Happy says rest in peace young girl. Alaskan Snow Dragon 2021, um, I call it the Department of Joke now.
It calls jokes on you if you expect justice. Frankie Z13, if they detained him illegally, all their actions past that point are a crime. That is if you or I did it. Yes, that's correct. That is the theory of all crimes in commission of a felony. Whatever happens in connection to that felony, you could be charged with it. You're the person that did it, even if you did it accidentally, okay? You're right, but they're cops. Remember, the judge said they have immunity. East Village boy, he loves the people so much, he'll destroy the rainforest for them. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've done it, okay? Now we've been trying to do this since day one. Find the original Karen. Legend has it that if we find the original Karen and can somehow expel the Karenicity from inside of her, then all of the Karens of the world would no longer engage in Karenicity. That's what the legend says, ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. You need a severe loss. You need a severe lifestyle. You need to get the out of my face and leave me alone because you are all nothing but the lowest form of military that ever existed in ever you need to get out of this goddamn life and no you don't you dare don't you dare don't you dare don't you dare I think we've done it this was over a mask, obviously. Uh, and listen, you get to a, a particular point in life, you know, you, you're definitely not going to do what somebody else tells you to do. I got some people like that in my family. They would not have responded this way, but this is OG Karen. Uh, Senator Turner, I decided to add a little levity to the situation. Um, but, you know, it's about a mask again. Yes, you did. You and the team outdid yourself this time. I fear for the woman's life. I thought she was gonna die right there on the spot. She was mm. so Jesus. I'm like, lady, please calm down. Calm, down. calm, calm yes. your nerves. Calm your nerves. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But falling back on the same racist tropes that uh, the Karens usually do, you can yeah. see it. It's a pattern there in the type of language uh, that they use. But uh, yeah, this one must be the original Karen for sure. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> there's um, there's this sentiment. That those who are anti mask are somehow part of a new, um, I guess, white privilege civil movement. rights movement, right? <laughs> right. right. And, yeah. and so this, <laughs> this next one <laughs> is about someone who comes into the store with a mask and decides to pull the mask off and tries to do a rally of sorts to become leader of the no mask movement. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. A movement of one. She tried to start a movement inside of the restaurant because I don't know, she thought if she told everybody, take off the mask, that everyone would be on her side. No, they, they, they are going to wear their mask, Karen, because they're trying to get their meal. Okay, and that's the rule of the restaurant. 
is to have on a mask, all right? Uh, here's what's really interesting. I don't know if y'all peep this, but when she said, I love everybody, she made sure to stop to tell the black woman, I listen, I love you. I love you, okay? You know why? Because she's racist. I know you're going to say, Doc, she said absolutely nothing racist at all. She doesn't have to. That move is a classic Karen move. I have a black friend, here's my black friend right here. I love you, this is not about you, I'm not racist. Nobody asked you if you were racist. You just said you love everybody. But then you went to the black woman and said, no, 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 I really love you. They give themselves up quite easily. Uh, privilege, right? This is real simple. This has not been an issue except now. Restaurants can enforce very simple rules like no hat, excuse me, no shoes, no shirt, no service. But legally, if they said, hey, you have to wear a particular hat to get a discount on a meal, which some restaurants have done that before as a gimmick, that's enforceable. They can do that too. Senator Turner, I just movement look, failed. Movement failed. I love you too, black lady. I love you too, because <laughs> you ain't part of all of y'all. Right, you're not. No, right. no, no. I gotta have a special love. For I gotta you. Have I don't, special. No, that's yeah. what it is, Senator. I get yeah. it now. She will say, "Listen, I, I love you differently than I love everybody that's else, right. but I still do love you, though." That's, that's exactly it. We got her all wrong. Look, Doc, I wish we could put all these Karens on the island. I swear to God, I really. That would really be amazing. Do. They are. You know. Yeah. Senator, <laughs> I think you just came up with something here. Perfect what Karen's if we did a survivor Karen? <laughs> oh, oh. Off the chain. That would Off be so chain. like I would have to watch that. That I would, would be, that will become a key part of our development as a nation. We would need to examine all of these Karens. And then here's the twist. Midway through the program, midway through the season, they fly in on a helicopter. Follow me on this, you all. And they drop a bunch of anti-Karens in the middle. <laughs> That would be amazing. Look, we might as well go ahead and write the show. Write the show up. <laughs> Pitch it. <laughs> that you know, reality show ultimate. Yeah, reality it really would TV. be. You know, we we make jokes. We try to laugh because you have to laugh not to cry. But the reality is that the Karenicity we talk about, are people that exhibit this kind of behavior, they have been really detrimental to. People, we've highlighted this kind of personality and attitude, making a big deal out of something that's not a deal at all. Uh, and people have been arrested, people have, have been shot, people have been killed. And we know this, this Karenicity thing, you know, that's just dangerous. a different terminology. It's very dangerous yeah. because how many times has, and, and you can find this just following the life of Thurgood Marshall and others who defended black men who got accused of raping a white woman. A white woman yells rape and all of a sudden the whole town comes after this particular individual when the truth is they were actually in a consensual relationship. And so th this has been happening for a very long time. And what it does, it muddies the water when they are real victims. And that's the problem with this kind of attitude and personality is that there are real victims in the world. And there are real individuals that should be arrested and that should be held accountable. But when you make false allegation and you make false claims against individuals and you try to weaponize your whiteness in the process, then how do we separate and categorize? Come on, real consequences, Doc. You know, you're making me think about Emmett Till, young mm. Emmett Till, wasn't nothing but a baby. Yep. Relatively speaking, a white woman lied on him and you know he ended up being killed. Black Wall Street actually. Started the burning of Black Wall Street, started from this. You remember the elevator? Yeah, elevator incident. Elevator operator, yep. and some stuff jumped off. And, and uh, you know, there were within some of the, the rules or, or, you know, some of the, the practices and policies, and people don't understand this stuff that is all connected. That if you talk too loud, you can talk too loud around white women. You know, all of that kind of stuff was built up around that. And you know why? Because of white man's guilt. Yep. For what they did to black women. Uh, generation after generation, starting with chattel slavery, and went even beyond that. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but I, but um, oh, and I did, let me throw out uh, Alan B. Wells, one of the greatest journalists of the 20th, you know, of of, of the uh, 19th, 20th century, but just standing up and writing about the lynchings that yeah. were going on and really, really making it plain, Doc. So all of this stuff 
is really interconnected and we got to get it. So yeah, we make light of some of this stuff, but it does really have some serious consequences and it is rooted in a type of pathology That's right. in this country when it comes to black men, particularly black men and white women. But it was a guilt factor because a lot of black women got raped and even beyond chattel slavery. One of the things that Mrs. Rosa Parks did and a lot of people may not realize this and you should look her up beyond what she did on that bus. But mm -hmm. she was sent into the South to investigate for the for the NAACP and a lot That's of right. the work that she did had to do with black women being raped, like walking down the street from work and pulled mm -hmm. into the to cars or either law enforcement or just random white men and, and raped. Let me make a connection between policy and what we have deemed to be Karenicity or Karenism. In the South and Southern states, there was a law called reckless eyeballing. Yes. You know what that is? Reckless eyeballing is when you look in particular directly at a white woman. And you could be charged, and back then they were charged with reckless eyeballing. Only recently, the states like Alabama and other others start to actually take those laws off the books. They were still on the books. They were still actual laws. And back to the massacres that happened with Black Wall Street and other places, look at the hand and glove fit. So you have a government that was complicit because they didn't want to prosecute anybody, okay? You had members of law enforcement who likely engaged in the criminality and destruction of that city, of that community. And you had insurance policies, all of these black owned businesses had insurance policies. But you know what was in the fine print of the insurance policies? That they would not cover none of this if it was due to a racial riot. That was the language inside of the insurance policy. Why? Because they wanted to create cover for white supremacists if they chose to destroy these businesses without any penalty on the insurance company. Okay, all right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of comments, let's get to it. Let me first say a big shout out to Heather, okay? Heather had to defend her dissertation. Heather is a TYT viewer. She successfully defended her dissertation and is now Dr. Heather. Congratulations to you. And I told you I would give you a shout out and I wasn't here on Friday. So I wanna give you a shout out today. But Adrian Lawrence did give you a shout out. So now you got two. Congrats again, doctor. All right, let's get to the comments. We got a lot of them, I'll read as many as I can. Mickey C, the Silver Hat Dragon. In 1968, I drove from New York to Florida. I forget which southern town I was in, but I stopped at the nearest, I stopped the nearest person to ask for directions. It just happened to be a black man. As I spoke to him, he kept averting his eyes and looked very uncomfortable. I later asked a black woman about it and she told me, even with all I'd seen in my 20 years up to that point, I was stunned. Yeah, he, he was indoctrinated to not look uh, directly at white women. Yeah, uh, Eric the Red, that was fascinating. If it wasn't for the risk of infection, I'd have been uh, spellbound if she came up to me like that. <laughs> it was fascinating, wasn't it? It was like a vortex and you just can't stop watching. Okay, super chat, David Coleman, Nina Turner and Rashad Ritchie 2024. <laughs> uh, that's that's Nita Turner and somebody else. <laughs> All right, uh, Jay Bay. Every time I tell my fiance about Nita Turner news, she does a little Tina Turner dance, and yes, she absolutely understands the difference. Love me some Nita Turner. You're a personal hero to me. Also, Doc, love your program. We love you back, Jay. Thank you for that. I'm Chaplain Fred. Said Dr. Richie, there is an island in Mexico called Carina Island. <laughs> that will be a perfect place. Love Miss Turner, wish she she could come to Cali. A perfect place for the Karen reality show. I love we it. We got it, all right. Uh, Salty Cracker says, doctor, I've seen a lot of these Karen videos and feel obliged to mention that all the Karen videos you have are of white people. Are you saying they're none of color? We have shown others, sir. Uh, and here's how you can find it. Go directly to youtube.com forward slash indisputable TYT 
and go to the I wish a Karen Wood videos and bend your heart out, okay? All right, uh, Trisha Briggs, I have come to rely on your program and the truth that comes with it. Doc, you and Senator Turner are two of my heroes. As a white woman, I do everything to educate my children to be better, love y'all. And we love you back and your children love they love you too. Thank you for doing what you do. Osiris, XTV, uh, black black women was like, nah, <laughs> like, yeah, she wasn't down with the movement. I mean, she was like, I love you though, in a special way. Okay. Um, Dungeon Master, I am sock. If you slay the first carriage, you turn. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you slay the first Karen, she turns into insane Yelp reviews and reconstitutes in a few days. <laughs> I'm done, I'm, I'm so done, that was hilarious. All right, thank you for that, we really appreciate that. Okay, um, this was uh, really sad, Rem uh, do you remember? Um, in New York, remember New York, the uh, George Floyd uh, statue that was um, that was attacked, right? Remember that? Well, we found the guy who did it. Can we put his picture up? Now, who is this guy? He may, I mean, may be familiar to somebody. He's actually. A D-list actor named Mika or Micah Bills. I don't know and really don't care. One or the other. Uh, he was on Infowars. He did an interview on Infowars. He appeared in one episode of Parks and Recreation, and he appeared in an episode of CSI New York. And he also did this. Let's put up the picture of him. He also appeared there. Same guy. Bills is 37, has been charged with second degree criminal mischief. The New York Police Department's hate crime division wrote on Twitter Monday. He allegedly rode by the statue on a skateboard and threw gray paint on his face and base in the morning of October 3rd, police said. A previous tweet. From the NYPD included footage from the incident that you saw. I'll be damned. The NYPD reportedly identified bills from a video of the vandalism showing a white man with a skating a skateboard throwing silver paint on the statue. Uh, the day after the incident, uh, the governor of New York had this to say, this act of cowardice and hate is reprehensible, okay? Uh, this tweet was on October 4th, alongside an article detailing the incident. I have directed the New York uh, State Police Hate Crime Task Force to provide any assistance in the investigation to find the perpetrator and to hold them accountable, okay? Uh, this is not Bill's first arrest, according to the police. Uh, he was arrested in Washington, D.C. for breaking curfew during the January 6th Capitol riots. Now. This guy's an actor. He's obviously a ridiculous individual going on Infowars and stopping whatever he was doing uh, during his day and uh, doing this to a statue. What kind of hate do you have in your heart? What kind of person are you to do this to a statue of a man who was murdered? Who are you? Uh, Senator Turner, it seems like there's no respect for anybody. No, I mean, and you start with a statue and that kind of stuff can escalate to something. Mm -hmm. else too, and that's why this is important. We're not just talking about this just for, for giggles. It is very much a manifestation of uh, what is in uh, Bill's heart. I was gonna say maybe he thought he was auditioning, but I, you know, mm, yeah, uh, for, for for a role. But that but may be his defense. Ironically yeah. enough, yeah. we yeah. have heard defenses similar to that. Mm -hmm. This may be his defense at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah. All right, so he's been arrested. They know who he is. Uh, we will continue to follow the story. Virginia Councilman shows up in blackface. Look at him. There he is. I mean, he thought this was a good idea. 
This is a whole damn councilman. Let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, the Richmond County NAACP, a member of the NAACP got in touch with me about this story this week. And when I heard the story, I said, no. He dressed up like who? He did what? Let me see a picture. Let's show the picture again. Okay? He has apologized for his blackface costume. His name is Farron Hamblin. He also declared, and I quote, I don't go around walking on eggshells worried about hurting someone's feeling, but I never intended for this to be a racist issue. Let me give you a little more background before I give you that background. Here's what he looks like in real life. Here's his picture, okay, that's him. Blackface was a good idea according to him. Virginia Warsaw Councilman Farron Hamblin has apologized for posing in blackface as, as one of Eddie Murphy's iconic characters from coming to America. It was Randy Watson, he was trying to look like Randy Watson. Uh, Hamblin shared the image over the weekend and it quickly caused outrage. Uh, WWBT News reports the white councilman serves the town of Warsaw in Virginia, uh, but moonlights as a musician. He decided to pay homage to Murphy's character of Randy Watson, but darken his skin uh, to do so. It received backlash, uh, it was extreme backlash. But let me read um, what Mr. Hamblin said. This was a comment saying, and, and this is a statement from the NAACP quoting him, as a white man, I'm sure folks would take offense. Okay, that means you knew it was racist. <laughs> you just said you did not intend it to be racist. Before you did it, you said, no, as a white man, I'm sure folks would take offense. Oh, okay, you already knew what you were doing. Uh, with this knowledge of mine, Mr. Hamlin still found it in his best interest to post a photo he knew would cause divisiveness. The photo in which Mr. Hamblin posted of himself in blackface is repulsive and inconsiderate to African American people everywhere, especially in Richmond, in the Richmond County community. That is directly from the Richmond County NAACP. Let me remind everyone why this is in fact offensive. It's American origins can be traced to minstrel shows. In the mid to late 19th century, white actors would routinely use black grease paint, just like this cat, on their faces when depicting plantation slaves and free blacks on stage. To be clear, these were not flattering representations at all. Taking place against the backdrop of a society that systematically mistreated and dehumanized black people. They were mocking portrayals that reinforced the idea that African Americans were inferior in every way. Let me remind everyone also, uh, white people would use blackface in order to represent black uh, individuals and black people who would act in some of these plays when they were allowed had to also wear blackface because white patrons did not want to see their natural black skin. That's the history of it and he should not get anywhere near that. Senator Turner, what are your thoughts? Yeah, 21st century, I keep asking myself, look, don't run for office if you just don't know the basics. Right. It just don't make sense. I mean, of all the costumes this dude could have selected, of all of them, this is the one that he picked and I'm glad you walked us down history lane because this stuff started to happen in earnest after the Civil War. That's right. Hello, somebody. So it's when black folks were set free, in my air quotes, mm -hmm. that these black, that these white folks decided that it was okay to mock everything about black people, but particularly our darker skin, our features, they exaggerated everything and demeaned those those features. So it was meant to hurt and mistreat. Black folks, not to celebrate and uplift, and this man should have known better. And Doc, I think wasn't it the governor there, Northam or somebody? Mm -hmm. He had a yearbook photo they found. Virginia, what's going on with you? What's going on what, what, with y'all? What's going on with you? You know, and yep. then they always want to apologize. Man, why you do it? Especially yep. this dude, but Northam the same thing. So yep. look, they know better.
That's right, well said. Let me show a picture of a man who was beaten by the police. Here's his picture. His name is Trenell Stewart. You see that? Trenell Stewart is out of Missouri. Black man has now filed a lawsuit against Maryland Heights police, accusing officers of unlawful seizure, excessive force, unlawful search after what? A damn traffic stop. That's it. Just a traffic stop. Let me give you some background. This happened back in 2016. Trenell Stewart, 38 years of age, was pulled over by Maryland Heights police while he was pulling into his apartment complex parking lot. Police accused Stewart of failing to use his turn signal. At some point during his drive home, Stewart denied the allegations and turned to retrieve his young son from the back seat when he was accosted by officers, according to a lawsuit filed by Stewart. Officers grabbed him by his hair and said, you're going to die today. There is now a lawsuit. I want to remind you of what they did to this man in front of his son because of a traffic signal in an apartment complex. Senator Turner, your thoughts? Just because they could. Like, I'm, I'm really tired. You know, since George Floyd, because people thought, Oh my God, the lynching of George Floyd, right on, on, you know, right in broad open daylight, was gonna change things. It ain't changing nothing. It has not changed behavior or activities one iota. These folks are still, still operating in a way that says that they have a, 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 a reckless disregard for Black lives, and they don't even care about our babies. You know, we did the one about the par- paraplegic uh, uh, young man, and he had a, I think, a three-year-old in the back of his car. They just don't care. Yeah. All right, sister, always a pleasure having you on Indisputable. Uh, tell people how they can follow you. Thanks, Doc. Always good to be with you. I mean, you keep it real, baby, all the way live. All the way live. That's the name of the show, all the way live. All the way live. With Dr. Richie. Uh, at Nina Turner on Twitter, Nina Turner Ohio on the gram, Nina Turner on Facebook. And please join us for the Power Hour. And tomorrow, yes, 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 the, the panel, baby. All right, we'll be there. Thank you so much for all you do. No, thank you, Doc. I want to remind everyone to get ready for all new Friday Power Panel. Young Turks, Nina Turner will be there. All right, make sure you join. A lot happening. Um, also, 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 uh, reactions with Ravana. That's right after this show. Right after this one. But it's on Twitch, so you got to hop over to Twitch because it is a Twitch exclusive. Make it happen, reactions with Ravana on Twitch. And a big announcement, uh, looking for new video content creators right here at TYT. Here's what we're looking for. People who can write, produce, host, or edit short form editorial videos on breaking news and political stories with a progressive point of view. If interested, I need you to apply at tyt.com forward slash careers, tyt.com forward slash careers. Careers, all right, make that happen. Let me read some of these amazing comments. Uh, Mickey C, the Silver Hair Dragon, according to all the sci fi movies I've watched, if we go back in time to eliminate the original Karen, all those who followed would disappear and would not have existed. So, who has the time travel machine? <laughs> That's good, I like that. All right. Uh, Jamba Gino says, Yana, I'm an actor, I was only acting like a racist. Maybe he could say I was getting prepared for a role. Craig Craig Souffle, what a sorry and stupid white Randy Watson. Yeah, it is. Yep. Uh, Ricardo Chucky, <laughs> I wonder how a TYT office Christmas party would look like. See all these beautiful people hanging out together, having a little bit of fun. Drinks. Soft Batch says, there are plenty of black artists I love to be for Halloween. I just imply who I am, not paint it. Uh, and thank you, Quantum Dragon. Um, Mary Duff 911, the doctor's smile is worth a million dollars. Well, that is so sweet. Thank you for that high compliment. Ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.